Good morning, St. Luke's, again. I had such a good time preaching last week that I thought I'd come back and do it again. <laughs> On this second Sunday of Advent, in this season of hope and anticipation of something new coming into our lives and our world, I bring your attention now to Matthew's Gospel. Matthew writes about Jesus' cousin, John, a man doing something new at the River of Jordan in Judea. John was kind of a bohemian wild man, loud, who was shaking things up had a strange diet, albeit filled with lots of protein. I understand locusts have a lot of protein. And healthy cell-producing honey. Was not concerned about fashion, obviously. But in his blunt way, told the people that they must repent and be baptized and prepare for the kingdom was at hand. Prepare for the kingdom is at hand. And he was secure enough to say that he was not the one, but that there was one coming after him, his cousin, Emmanuel, my Jesus and your Christ, whose sandals he was not worthy to carry. John is saying that the kingdom is not out there, but it is at hand. It is now. Many compare John to Elijah, Elijah the prophet, who had prophesied that a Messiah would come. The forerunner to Jesus, John, got people ready. Even those considered pious and hypocrites. Oh, you brood of vipers. Ouch. Well, some heavy language there. But through the Jewish sacramental rite of baptism, John invited those Jewish folks to come, himself being a Jew. John took this rite of baptism to another level, proclaiming that all must repent and be baptized, not just a select group. Thus, he became known as John the Baptist because he baptized. John the Baptist reminds me of an encounter I had in high school. Growing up Baptist, I remember being quite dogmatic with a library aide about who John was as she tried to convince me that the only people who would be saved would be those members of the Church of Christ. I'm not speaking of Christians generally. There is a group. They would have problems that I said a denomination. But that Church of Christ, some of you are nodding because you know about that church. But not to be outdone by her, I fired back. But John was Baptist. We hear more about Isaiah's prophecy of the Lord's anointed in this Davidic line and later that addendum that's added towards the end of that section about the Messiah in this 11th chapter. Here Isaiah writes a proclamation 
about this stump of Jesse. And in our faith tradition, we understand this to be Jesus, this shoot that comes from the stump. The legal son of Joseph, a descendant of Jesse and David, and this shoot from this genealogical tree. This metaphor that Isaiah gives us, if you notice that, or you may know that when trees are traumatized, when they are stressed, in their effort to survive, in their resilience to survive, they produce a shoot that comes out. It's new growth of a stem, leaves, or buds in their effort to survive. With that shoot, there is promise for new life, a sign of hope for growth, resurrection over death. This metaphor is powerful for the nation. Israel was stressed and traumatized and stood as a nation that needed new life. Here Isaiah writes about this shoot that will come from the stump of Jesse to offer salvation to the nation. So in this Christ child, Jesus comes as a shoot to this nation. And we too have a promise of this new life, a new day idyllic, symbolized with the cow and bear grazing together and children playing with animals. When you are feeling discouraged, with a lack of hope, try this. Look to our children. They are our hope for the coming of new life. So hear the words of Isaiah again. A little child shall lead them, preparing the way for the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. I want to tell you a story of a seven-year-old named Eli. He visited his grandmother last Thanksgiving and was taken by her Heifer International Catalog. Some of you are familiar with Heifer International. It is a global charitable organization working to eradicate poverty and hunger in developing countries through sustainable values-based holistic community development. I support this wonderful organization. Influenced by his ancestors' donations of cows to these families so that they could become self-sustaining, Eli told his mother that he wanted to make an even bigger gift, an ark to change the world two by two. Two water buffalo, two cows, two sheep, and two goats, along with bees, chicks, seeds, tools, and training to turn their animals' output of milk, eggs, and wool into income, opportunity, and hope. So that night, Eli slept with the catalog under his pillow. 
The next morning, Eli told his mother that he had a plan for them to make money by selling poinsettia ornaments the next day at church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He told her that he could make a speech about their project. What's a mother to do but follow those instructions? So mother and grandmother loaded the ornaments up and like the prophet Elijah spoke to the people, Eli made his speech to the congregation at St. Andrew's Church in upstate New York. This is what he said. I'm Eli and I want to give an ark full of animals to help people who don't have enough. If you can help, my mom will be up front and give you an ornament. Go Eli is right. They made over $1,000 from that sale and Eli's mom's boss matched this amount, which allowed for the purchase of the ark. His mom wrapped the certificate and placed it under the Christmas tree. Eli opened it and with a huge smile said, this is the best Christmas ever. This is the preparing the way for Jesus to come into this world this Advent, giving hope to those around us, those who we pass on the streets and interstates who will not lie in a warm bed this night, children who will go to bed hungry this night so that they will be able to have a life that is beyond those dire circumstances. Let us prepare the way in our vote, in our voice, in our vocation. Eli shows us that we can make a difference at any age. We can show up and be the Jesus that gives new light and new life. We can reveal the glory of the Lord by our witness to bring new life to a world so that our Emmanuel, our God of Zion, our God of hope can fill us all with joy and peace in believing so that we all may be abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.